OCD with a capital B about playing Time and space recreates about playing I feel like I sound okay about playing <sighs> How do I feel? Ugh. I'm so drained Like an iPhone battery after half a day of usage <laughs> Well, yeah, of course I had OCD recently, just five minutes ago. There was a puddle of piss and there was a kid on a bike and, you know, kids like to go as fast as possible with the bike through the puddle, but I was far, far away, but even though I had this thought, was I enough far away that I didn't catch it? the piss, right? Oh. Yesterday I had like construction workers over and what should I say? I mean, <laughs> I needed to clean my flat for hours and I was so drained. I'm still feeling that. It's like, oh, I feel like shit. <sighs> Tomorrow it's another day, right? I'm supposed to. I had a typical OCD moment, so I search something in my backpack and something fell to the ground something which I don't want to grab something fell out of the backpack on the ground and I'm standing there and thinking fuck how should I grab it I mean I, I cannot just grab it and put it in my backpack again so luckily I had a Back and I put this in there. A split second where I thought, fuck it, I just go home and fuck this whole video thingy and I don't do it anymore. And, ah, OCD takes over. But no, I did not. I said, okay, how can I deal with that? Okay, I grab it, I put it in the bag. And now I'm here and we are talking and I'm still feeling stupidish. But you can ring my bell, ring my bell. How does OCD feel? <music> Annoying? Uh, well, did you ever had um, fear of dying? I mean, maybe you passed the street and you almost got hit by a car. That bodily feeling of fear and deep angst 24-7. OCD also happens on a spectrum. I mean, it's not, not everybody is the same and there's this media way of seeing OCD like monk with the hands you know it's like common there's a very low compulsion and crippling life situation and there's this monkish behavior where you cannot cope with anything anymore and you have this hierarchy of your compulsion something which is for me very annoying and it's on the very top is germs everything connected to germs and on the very low end there's maybe something About did I correctly turn off this oven but the, the problematic part here is how much importance does it take within your life so there could be the situation where you need one hour to leave the flat because you're repetitively checking the oven. It takes time. You have to plan differently to come to your appointments in time. I mean, it's like draining. Yeah, it drains you. You have the urge to do that and it's the problem with OCD. There's this anxiety, this deep angst. And usually, we humans feel that deep angst when we are close to dying. I mean, when we are passing the street and don't see the car or we are too close on the edge, maybe on a mountain. Where this brief second where you realize it was so near that you would have died, right? And this anxiety is out of proportion with OCD.
What the fuck is going on? Uh, yeah, well, we are shooting a documentary about uh, anxiety, OCD. Uh, what are you doing here? Who are you? Me? What the fuck are you talking about? Don't you have TikTok or Insta? I mean, look, don't you recognize me? No. I don't use this. I don't know you. Sorry. You don't get out. Okay. Bye. And that deep feeling of angst. You have it at any given time during your day. For instance, I told you about that thing I dropped on the ground. I had this exact anxiety within me, like I would have have crossed the street and almost got hit by a car. So, your landscape of what is giving you fear and what makes you feel bad it can be like that everything, even if it's high or low in the hierarchy of your OCD curriculum, th there's the default way of angst. This nagging doubt, I mean, you have, OCD is all about thoughts. So, you have a thought. What will happen if I grab that thingy from the ground and put it straight into my bag and will never wash it? Probably nothing, right? But with OCD, there's always this thoughts. You go so far back into some dystopian future and your whole life is falling apart just because of that. Because it's so blown out of proportion that anxiety has no velocity anymore. It's constantly there. You don't know what's going on with you and you feel stupid because you're aware that you're going 20 times back to the flat and checking the oven. You know that. You're standing there and doing this for the 20th time and you have this anxiety, okay, you're coming also late to this appointment, but you cannot leave the flat because when you leave the flat, maybe the oven is still on and the whole house is burning down and everybody dies just because of you. That is the main culprit, I think, in, in OCD, that you lose the trust in yourself, you're so brainwashed because you have to do everything so often that you don't know it anymore. Did you do it? Did you not? And fun fact, it's like always when you're doing your rituals, you do it so precisely that even though when you do it 20 times unprecisely, it is correct. I mean, when you wash your hands, for instance, I had like incidents where I washed my hands for hours. I'm not kidding. And even after hours, I did not feel satisfied clean. Just stand there for hours and washing my hands. And after hours, I still feel dirty. Because there was always this nagging thought, but maybe you did it not correct. You completely disregard that you already washed your hands a hundred times in a row. But it doesn't matter because also D, it's based on rules. You have your own rules. How do you wash your hands that you, when you're finished, feel I washed my hands correctly? According to my rule set. And if I don't, with OCD rituals, what are you doing? You constantly wash away the fear which is produced by OCD in the first place. So you can never come to that point where everything is okay because in two hours there's the next situation. It's a moving thing. It's a moving thing, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> it never gets boring, that's right.